welcome to Phoenix Kitchen. My name is Stacy Williams and I'm your host. We're going to talk about fire, food, and flavor. We'll discuss recipes and techniques for both indoor and outdoor, where we'll add that secret ingredient, smoke, to get the most flavor out of all of our recipes. We're glad that you joined us today. While you're here, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all our recipes. If you like the content, hit the thumbs up and leave us a comment. If you make the recipe, don't forget to share a pic. We're on the road to our first 1,000 subscribers. When we hit 1,000, we'll be giving away a five-piece Lodge cast iron cookware set. To be entered for the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe and leave us a comment. Now, on to our video. Today, we're gonna to be making one of my favorites, armadillo eggs. If you're not familiar with armadillo eggs, they are absolutely delicious. Armadillo eggs are jalapenos stuffed with a cream cheese mix wrapped in breakfast sausage, wrapped in bacon, smoked, and glazed with barbecue sauce. Armadillo eggs were made popular as appetizers at Texas barbecue joints, but I like to give them my own little twist and use them for different reasons, and that's what we're going to look at today. So the first thing we're going to do to make these armadillo eggs is get our stuffing made for inside of the jalapeno. So we open up a package of cream cheese that we've left out to soften. To the cream cheese, we're going to add shredded cheddar cheese. Now we're going to add seasoning. For the armadillo eggs, I always use the Meat Church Holy Cow, and it's going to be seasoned to taste, and then mix until everything is fully incorporated. <laughs> Next, we're going to go ahead and cut the end off of a couple of jalapenos. Then we're going to scoop the contents of the jalapeno out, get rid of all of the seeds. I've got a handy dandy little tool that does it with a little bit of twisting. You could just as easily do this with a spoon or a knife. We just want to make sure that we get everything out all the way down, not necessarily because we're scared of heat, but because we need room for all that great ooey gooey cream cheese. Now we have to get our cheese mixture into the jalapenos. Now I'm only doing two today, so I can just use my hands or a spoon to go ahead and stuff this down in there. A little trick if you're making multiples, if you're having a party, you know, Super Bowl is coming up, maybe you're making 20 or 30 of these things. Go ahead and run that cream cheese through a food processor and put it into a piping bag. And you can go ahead and squeeze it in very easily, fill those jalapenos up. Uh, but there's just no point in us doing that today with only two. It's more of a mess than it's worth. All right, now that the peppers are stuffed, it's time to wrap them in breakfast sausage. Now we're gonna be using our homemade breakfast sausage. I'll put a link in the description to the video showing you how to make that. If you don't wanna go through the trouble of making that, then go ahead and grab just some of your favorite breakfast sausage from the supermarket. We're going to pat this out nice and thin. About a quarter inch thickness is going to be the right amount. And we're going to make sure we wrap this all the way around the peppers, all the way up over each end because we want to make sure that our cream cheese filling does stay inside. Now that we've wrapped in sausage, it's time to wrap in bacon. Now once again, we're going to be using our homemade bacon. If you don't know how to make bacon at home, you can check in the description below for the link and we'll show you how to do that. If not, store bulk will work just fine. In this case, you are going to want thin sliced bacon because when you're cooking this up, you want the bacon to get nice and crispy. Thick bacon is going to take a little too long to crisp and create a little too much grease. And since we're looking for thin slice, I am going to have to go ahead and slice up some bacon at this point because I normally keep thick slices that I use for breakfast. I also cut my bacon short ways so it's easier to fit in the pan. So I've got to get some longer strips cut out so that we can wrap all the way around. Now it will take two to three strips of bacon to make it all the way around depending on the size of the jalapeno and how thickly you put on the sausage. So we're going to go ahead and get those strips laid out and wrap them around the jalapenos. All right. 
right, we've got everything all wrapped up. The last step before we cook these, go ahead and get these seasoned. Now I'm using the Meat Church All Purpose uh, Rub. We're gonna get these things coated. We want every inch of it covered all the way end to end. Flavor in every single bite. Don't forget the ends. We'll get these all wrapped up and ready to cook. Now we're gonna go ahead and get these things cooked off. I'm gonna be cooking mine on my offset smoker today. Now I've already got some things on the smoker, so I'm just gonna double check, make sure that we've got a good coal bed going, see if we need another piece of wood in there, double check our temp. We're gonna be cooking at 250 today, and on this smoker, it's gonna take about 90 minutes to reach an internal temperature of 150. Now, you can cook these anywhere. I do it on the offset because I, I want that natural smoke flavor. If you've got a pellet grill, if you've got an electric smoker, you could cook these in the oven if you need to. In the oven, you could bump that up, you know, 350 or so, and it'll only take about 45 minutes to an hour to cook. While those are cooking, we're gonna go ahead and get our glaze ready. I'm gonna start with a base of barbecue sauce. This is a homemade barbecue sauce. There's a video link in the description below that'll take you to that recipe if you're interested in making it, or you can use whatever barbecue sauce you have on hand that's your favorite. I wanna make a glaze, so I'm gonna thin this barbecue sauce out by adding a little apple cider vinegar. And then just to have a lot of fun, because we're gonna do this as a breakfast food, I'm gonna add maple syrup to it. And we're just going to whisk these ingredients together to make sure everything's fully incorporated and get the consistency that we're looking for out of the glaze. We'll be either brushing or mopping these on, allowing the heat to crystallize the sugars in the sauce. It's going to give us a nice crispy shell in addition to the crispiness of the bacon as we cut into these. Well, it's been about an hour, so let's go back and check in on these, see how we're doing, how close to that 150 we've we're come. Okay, they're looking pretty good. Got some nice color on them. Let's just probe them with the thermometer, find out where we're at. All right, rocking about 140. I'm gonna move these just a little closer to the fire and let them go for about another 30 minutes and then we'll get them glazed. All right, so we hit that internal temperature I was looking for of 150 but we had a nice storm popping up, so I decided to bring these in and finish them off in the oven. Got the oven set at 300, gonna get the glaze on. And what we're looking for to crystallize this glaze is to allow these in the oven long enough to bring them up to a finishing temp of 165 in turn. Obviously, that's where we want our pork. I was looking for the 150 as a point to get the glaze on, so I know when to put it on. Uh, we don't want the glaze to burn, we want it to crystallize and we wanna make sure that we brought everything up and that would give us the few minutes that we need to make that happen. So I'll go ahead and get, make sure we get all of the different sides all the way around, all the end pieces with our glaze, and then we're gonna pop these in the oven and let them go until they're nice and crystallized and we have an internal reading of 165. All right, now it's time to plate these things up and eat them. One of the great things about this, you can make these on the weekend, put them in the fridge, and then heat them in the oven, exactly like we just finished these off, and have them anytime during the week. We like to have breakfast for dinner at least one night a week, and that's exactly what we're doing here. It's the reason we added the maple syrup to it, because we really wanted that nice breakfast type flavor versus an appetizer at a, um, at a barbecue place. So we take a look at that. The cream cheese is all nice and melty and gooey. The sausage is cooked all the way. The bacon is nice and crispy. And that glaze is delicious. It's a little heat, it's a little sweet, and it's gonna work out perfectly with the rest of our breakfast. All right, so for our simple breakfast at night, we put these on a plate with a few hash browns, fry up a couple of eggs, and there we have it, a delicious breakfast at night. 
right, don't forget to check out our other videos linked in the description below, and we look forward to seeing you next time.